All right. So we're playing here some Mist Exile. And you know what? Let, let me adjust the volume for a second here. Let's just go ahead and drop that down a little bit. I, I think this is about the right setting. So, if you're not familiar with the Myst series, Myst was an early adventure game, or I guess a puzzle adventure game, for like MS-DOS. Yeah, it's pretty old. Um, early 90s, maybe, maybe even late 80s, I don't know exactly. Um, but it was known for having pretty good graphics and uh, pretty interesting, you know, just look to it. Some early 3D graphics done via screenshots, because they could not render 3D at the time. So it was just a lot of screenshots of a 3D environment. Um, next game was Riven for the PlayStation 1, uh, probably also released for PC. Same kind of thing, screenshots, but a much more expansive game, played over five discs. Here we're going to be playing Myst 3 Exile. I'm just going to stay quiet during the intro. I realized as our group went back to Dunn that we should not restore the city as we had planned. Once magnificent buildings lay in ruin, testament to the hatred that had consumed them. Too many people had fallen victim to that hate, to the prejudice and greed from which it sprang. Gazing out across the cavern, I decided to write another age. One that would help the Dunny survivors begin again, free from the tragedies of their past. So with my wife, Catherine, supporting me, I put aside that past to write a future. More than a year has gone by since I finished writing Venetian. I have a new daughter, who I hope will someday lead to the age with me. And as I imagine Yisha meeting the Dunny, those brave men and women who are building a new life for themselves, I realize I've been given another chance as well. A chance to learn from my mistakes and leave the past behind me once and for all. All right, so yeah, what we're going to be doing here is kind of looking around. Now, this is a lot different than the first two games. We can actually look in 360 degrees, up, down, left, right. We've got a 3D mapped, um, I guess UV mapped texture for this current room. It's even got little movies. Well. Movie of a bird playing back there. It's not an, not an object. Now we can interact with the game with this little mouse cursor. When we try to move, we'll blur a little bit, and then we'll appear somewhere next to us. Because again, this is not real 3D. Since he found his journals out of place. 
but seeing how well the Donny have settled in on Relation should help them to finally relax. Maybe we'll turn the volume up a little bit, because this game is pretty quiet. Can't interact with her, nor the baby. She's just doing her thing. I'm sorry, the other door. Apparently that's not the right door. Let's go in here. As in uh, Riven, Certain things are animated, like opening doors, and you'll see the camera will snap into place, because, again, it's not real 3D, so they have to make sure your viewing angle is correct to see the movie correctly. If you're not familiar with Mist and Riven, don't worry about that. We're going to be learning as we're going. known for having very atmospheric music like this. It's a very methodical puzzle game. And this here would be a book. Books play a very important role in the Myst series. Books are more or less magical in nature. So that thing is maybe a world. I forget if this is the... I forget if this is the Book of Riven. At the very least, uh, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can look closer at things. And get a little cursor with a magnifying glass. Nothing here we can click on, though. I guess there's them. She looks very mysterious in this picture. Not sure if that is foreshadowing. Master Taemin, Guild of Stonemasons, Relishan. Taemin, thank you for responding so quickly to my request for Nera Padlocks. As you know, security in Tamhara has become an important issue as of late. Perhaps I'm overreacting, as Catherine suggests, but the idea that someone may have been sneaking into my study, reading all my journals, disturbs me. After what happened to my library on Mist, after my own sons, Cirrus and Akinar, destroyed so many of my books, I've come to realize how delicate the link is to my worlds. I've never been able to repair those burned books, to link to each age and find if its inhabitants survived. The padlocks won't change that situation, but they should ease my fear of trespassers considerably. Sincerely, Atris. So Atris is the guy who was writing in the uh, his, those notes earlier. His two sons fought in the first game of Mist. I think here here they are. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they are locked away in another world. So, might not have to worry about that. And Catherine came in Riven. Uh, she was stuck there. I guess it's the same thing. And we had to save her. Which we did, and we found uh, Atris's father, I believe, was corrupting the world of Riven. Uh, he had been locked in Riven as a punishment. This is interesting. Some kind of tapestry. And more tapestries. So... In the worlds of Mist, um, somebody can write a book, and the book will link your world to another world that you've created in your mind. Or, I guess, written in the book somehow, using magic spells. Here's Relishan. Well, my friend, I see you found the Relishan book. Catherine tells me you've been here for some time. I'm sorry if I've kept you waiting. But since we'll be gone a few days, I need to secure some also wanted to bring you this. It's a journal I kept while I was writing Relishan. I thought you might find it interesting to read about 
what I'd hoped to achieve, compared to what the age truly is. Well, just let me get my keys to unlock the Nishan and hopefully off. Oh, and I'm interested in hearing what you've been up to in recent months. As you can see, this is when a book is working, it'll show us a movie of where we can go to. If we don't do anything, I guess uh, we'll go through anyway, because this is the start of the game. Look at this beautiful sweeping view of Reli Shan. That guy just ran off with those books. Well, you know, I said we were in Relishan, but I guess I don't know. This could be anywhere. Relishan could be the book that he took. Main thing that's happening in Mist are you'll find weird gizmos that um, it's not always clear what they're doing. So there's some kind of gizmo here. This, this is a telescope? We can rotate it. When we rotate it, we see somewhere else. Huh. Okay. Seems to have three sides, so I guess we'll just check all of them. This one's sort of black. So we have like ocean, stone, and black. Not super helpful. Now, I will say, um, the game is a lot nicer looking than in Riven. The fact you can freely turn around is pretty convenient. And we can, we can do some fast scrolling, it seems, by holding down the shoulder button. So we're, we're not going in the direction of the guy who ran off with those books. Um, no particular reason. Just, um, in this kind of game, th like I said, this is a very methodical game. We're not going to be fighting. It's not going to be anything like that. So chasing after him is probably pointless. He'll just keep running away, and we'll lose track of him eventually. It's really more about exploring and trying to understand how this world works all fits together. What's going on? For example, like, this, this is like a weird tooth-looking thing here. There's another one in the distance. There's another one over there. Is that important? I don't know. There's a tower. What's the tower for? It's all this ocean. Oh, there's like a manhole over here. I'm gonna skip that manhole for now. So when I was just testing out this game, just to make sure uh, it seemed like it was working and everything, came over here and I noticed, uh, in addition to this beautiful view, there's a ladder down here. I just want to appreciate this view. Ah. Pretty nice. Just kind of nothing as far as the eye can see. Okay, let's go down. When we come down this ladder, here's another gizmo. What is that? Is that a, like a door? Like a round door? 
over there. Some kind of, there's the, land, the manhole with the ladder. Some kind of switches here. So, it seems that by moving these switches, the ladder over there kind of moves. So that just smashed that. Did that like open a, a, a door? Did that break that door open? I don't know. What I can tell you though, is that if we walk over to that manhole, this big boulder is gonna be in the way. So we have to get this out of the way before we're gonna be able to look at that. And there we go. Now we have a path from the manhole to that door. Let's climb back up. Is that some volumetric lighting? That's a nice touch. When we looked up at the sun, things got brighter. So there is some kind of uh, lighting also in this game, I guess. Alright, I had it smash this thing, but I guess smashing it didn't actually do anything. Oh. But you know, that door was closed. I wonder, can we make it roll into this room? It does seem like there is a pit here. Would falling in the pit do something? Seems to be a button over there of some kind, but the floor is gone. I guess this is what the inside of one of those teeth looks like. So if this is one tooth, maybe the other teeth are similar. This boulder does look thin. Maybe it can fit through the door. Let's let's try that. Mist is a game where you pretty much can't go wrong just fooling around. Not really the kind of game where you're gonna, gonna get a game over. Uh, mild exception for like the end of the game, where there might be multiple endings and you could get you know a bad ending or something. fell into the thing. I guess let's go take a look, see what changed. Oh, <laughs> I do have to fix the ladder so we can climb down. Okay. Yeah, do you see that? When we look like directly up, the screen gets brighter. It's a nice touch.
Okay. Oh, I guess we are walking across that. Sort of filled in the pit for us. There's a blue light there. Oh, that's a reflection of that. Okay. Let's find out what this thing is. Huh. Some kind of password input. If we press the middle thing, I guess that will try to unlock this. But I don't know what the password is. So we'll go back. Reset that puzzle. Okay, well, it's about half a puzzle finished. Not sure what we're supposed to input there, but it's it's waiting for us to find an answer. Now that we're back on top, maybe it'd be a good time to go read the journal and find out what is Relishan. I've always feared this day will come. For years, Catherine and I have dreamed of restoring the Danai. I think it's I think he calls him the Dani. Um, we've dedicated our lives to the task, taking it upon ourselves to locate the citizens of the Dani and convince them to return to their ruined city and rebuild. Our dream has become the dream of so many now, and the pro the progress we have made towards achieving it is something of which we can all stand proud. But I know now that it has been a mistake. The city of Dani should not be restored. It should stand forever in ruins as both a symbol of our past mistakes and a memorial to those who lost their lives when the Dani, when the Dani fell. The devastating events of the recent months, the war on Terrani, and the death of Uda in particular have driven this truth home to me quite forcefully. If we rebuild the city walls today, are we not giving approval to the very illness that destroyed our civilization in the first place? Are we not setting ourselves up to repeat that pattern again in the future generations? I've put much thought into this tonight, and I have found only one solution. If we, the men and women who survived the downfall of the, da of the Dani, are to thrive, then we must break the pattern of hatred which has destroyed so many lives. We must begin our civilization anew, and we can only do that if I write a new age. I've spoken with Catherine about this, and she agrees. I only hope that the others will see it as well. So an age is a world, as represented by a, a linking book. It lets you travel between the ages. Um, and I, I guess you can create an age by also writing a book. So you write a book to create a world, and you write a book to travel there, I think is how it works. Well, these people never cease to amaze me. I thought they would object to my decision. After all, most of them linked back to Donnie specifically to see the city rebuilt. When I told them why we should not restore it, their response was immediate and unanimous. Whereas yesterday they thought only of rebuilding, today they consecrate, uh, concentrate solely on salvage. They intend to take from the ruined city only that which is best and move on. Everywhere I look, the enthusiasm for this new task is obvious. It heartens me, even as I face my own monumental contribution. I've written many ages in my lifetime, from first timid attempts under the tyrannical tutelage of my father, to my recent accomplishment, Averone. Never before has so much been riding on my skill. The age I am about to write must be all I ever imagined and more. How am I going to achieve it? Catherine laughed this morning when she saw me drudging out my old notebooks. I must have made quite a picture, sitting near the embers of fire surrounded by countless commentaries and journals. Some of them seemed more dust than paper. But the hours I spent sifting through them was worth it. Ideas for what this new age might be are tumbling around in my head. 
there are almost too many to catch hold of. Obviously, I must have a starting point as my anchor. Writing ages is a science, a precisely structured equation of words. Every equation needs its foundation, an underlying concept around which an age can develop. In the past, I've written my books around whatever idea intrigued me the most at the time. And here we have what looks to be maybe two maps. Not quite sure. Um, are those maps of where we currently are or maps of somewhere else? I wanted to discover how the age to which the book linked would manifest, the results of that idea. Sometimes civilizations had arisen, sometimes they had not. But whether a society had come to exist in the age or not, it was often in response to whatever concept the book I had written embodied. This time, my search for a concept must be weighed very carefully. I already have the civilization I wish to see develop. I know our history as a people and the paths we have followed to arrive here. Today I must write a book which will link to an age that will allow us to continue on our way, growing ever stronger as one people. What underlying concept must this new age reflect that will best allow our civilization to thrive? I fear I must think of on this some more. So yeah, so the Dani are the people from Riven, I believe. And Riven, uh, aptly named, was being cut in half. Um, and so Riven was destroyed. Actually, I don't know if Riven was the name of the, uh, the place, but that was the name of the game at least. Um, which I did not really figure out that that's what it meant. Uh, but yes, they, that's why the game is called Riven. It's taken me some time, but I may have found my anchor. It came to me while I was considering what I know about the survivors of the Dani. We have seen so much tragedy in our lives, from the destruction of the city to the suffering and loss of loved ones due to plague and deprivation. Yet even in the midst of these adversities, my kinsmen and I have found strength to keep going. We have tapped into our individual strengths and transformed ourselves into something much stronger. It is a characteristic I have seen in several of my ages. Whenever I focused my writing on the inherent energy sources in a world, Long ago, Grandmother taught me that no life, no possibility for life, in an age exists without the presence of energy. By tapping into latent energy sources, an age moves out of stasis. It grows, transforms, and develops. Energy is the underlying fuel that powers all activity. To put it more simply, energy powers future motion. That's underlined. Okay. Yet, as Grandmother also liked to remind me, energy in an age takes on diverse forms. Each one has strengths and weaknesses of its own. How many forms will this new age contain? Which type will be its dominant theme? Tomorrow I will link back to Mist, and from there revisit several of my ages. Perhaps in my old worlds I will discover new ideas. I had almost forgotten how painful it is to revisit Mist. In the ten years since my sons, Cirrus and Akinar, left me trapped on Kavir Island and burned so many books. Catherine and I have rarely linked back. I told myself we were always too busy. First with writing ages like Avernon, and then with searching for the ages of Denis for survivors. I always said that we would spend more time on Mist, eventually. The truth is, I've been avoiding the age. Seeing the island in its current condition, it ignites so much anger and grief. I'm immediately reminded of my betrayal of my sons, as well as the cruelty and greed in which they plundered my ages. I know I am partly responsible for these acts. I constantly wonder if there was something I could have done to reach out to the boys before... Enough. Nothing can change the tragedies of the past. Like my Donnie kinsman, I must salvage what's best and move on. Perhaps in the process, I will find forgiveness and hope. Once again, I am back on Mist Island, having completed a lengthy sojourn. Though several of my trips... Uh, oh gosh, this is a long book. Though Through several of my ages, the trip itself was not as inspiring as I hoped. The Selenitic Age was especially disturbing, but it has not always been so. The very first time I linked to the age, its uninhabited landscape was shaking with tremors. At the time, I felt it was because the energy of the age was unfocused, as if it was at war with itself. 
Stability finally came, but even after it did, I never truly felt comfortable there. I missed the more natural balance of ages like Channelwood. Perhaps that is the lesson to take home with me. The Donnie, too, have faced much turmoil in their history. Their lives have been unsettled enough. Perhaps I should be striving to offset the energy that already exists within our civilization by providing it with a more stabilized environment in which to grow. An environment in which the natural equilibrium of the world serves as a counterpoint to the upheavals of civilization. The more I consider it, the more I wonder if I should make nature the foundation of this new age. Worlds like Channelwood attain equilibrium quite easily, primarily because of one reason. Nature encourages mutual dependence. Also underlined. As one life withers and dies, it provides nourishment so that another might live. Plants become food for animals, and the waste products animals cannot absorb become nutrients to sustain the other plants. So long as nothing intrudes to upset this balance, nature can maintain itself indefinitely. An interesting metaphor to set an example for my people. I think I will confer with Catherine on the subject. Her ages always exhibit symbiosis more dramatically than mine. Perhaps she should help me write this new age. I am so tired I can barely think right now. But I will force myself to stay focused, for I have not written anything in ages. Or in days, I guess. The moment I linked back to Donnie, I was besieged with requests for my assistance. Master Taman wanted to consult over which stone cutters were worth salvaging, and I did think that the rock in this new age would be difficult to sound. Oma and Essel needed my opinion about a new history they have uncovered. Should they hold off on starting its translation, or would paper supplies be scarce in the new age? There were so many questions needing answer, I barely had time to see Catherine. She of course laughed at my dilemma, saying that I had no one to blame but myself. After all, I was the one who encouraged the Donnie to start over. Naturally, they would look to keep, me uh, to keep them moving in the right direction, unless some other force stepped in to change that view. Her words made me realize a fundamental principle that I had thus far been ignoring. All this time, debating on whether to make energy or nature the underlying framework of the age, but there was another equation to consider. An age based solely on the future motion of energy will face constant upheavals, most likely at the cost of tranquility. And an age based solely on mutual dependence of nature can become balanced over time that it may cease to tolerate change. Yet to continue to grow as a people, Dani civilization needs both, occasional upheavals followed by periods of balanced stability. I've seen such situations occur naturally on several of my ages. Each time, it was because I centered the writing around some dynamic force that I had decided to make prevalent in the age. Such forces allowed the balance between forward motion and mutual dependence to fluctuate. As one concept takes precedence, the other recedes until another force surfaces and changes things. As Catherine's insightful comment reminded me, dynamic forces spur change. I am too tired to think more on this tonight. Hopefully in the morning, my thoughts will coalesce. Catherine surprises me today. Apparently, while, my, while I was off visiting my ages, she linked to Mist by herself. She did not say so, but I could tell that, she, that her visit had been painful. More than ever now, I am convinced I must find a place to begin again ourselves. Perhaps when I have written this new age for the Dani, I will put some thought into where Catherine and I might live. I cannot believe I did not see it before. All this time I have been struggling to describe the perfect age for the Donnie, I have considered and then rejected several underlying concepts which I felt might best suit, uh, set the course for their future, as if I alone should determine how the Donnie civilization will grow. In my own way, I have become as egotistical as my father. In truth, I owe this realization to Catherine. Sensing my indecision about the New Age, she led me on a walk around Donnie. Salvaging efforts were underway with teams of people scouring the ruined harbor district. As I watched my Donnie kinsmen deciding on which parts of their culture to retain, I realized that they did not need me to determine their future. They are quite capable of setting its course by themselves, regardless of what age I write. This realization has opened my eyes to the best approach to my task. I no longer need to worry about which underlying concept, energy, nature, or dynamic forces, I should make prevalent in the age. Rather, I should strive to include them all, I must write a balance of systems into the descriptive book, 
enough so that the Donnie people will constantly be challenged to obtain their ultimate potential. As Grandmother often pointed out to me when we spoke about ages back on Mist, balanced systems stimulate civilizations. At last, I feel I am ready to begin writing this age. Indeed, I am eager to begin, and have already come up with the perfect name. I know Grandmother would have loved it. Of course, Catherine could tell the moment I turned to her that I had finally found my starting point. I babbled on excitedly for some time before I noticed the smile she was hiding. When I saw it enough to grow suspicious, she handled me one of my oldest age books. She must have picked it up when she linked back to Mist. Seeing the name, uh, Jananin, uh, emblazoned on the book cover, I could only shake my head. The one age I never got around to revisiting was the one that would have helped me the most. How foolish I was to have completely forgotten it. I think, after I finished this work, I should take one final trip, if only to restore an old fool's memories. Alright, so that was a bit of a long book, but it had some interesting information in it. Something about the nature of this new world. I don't know if we're in the new world yet. But we've learned that some worlds, when created with energy, get some sound here. Yes, worlds created with energy result in upheavals. Oh, interesting. So when we look here, we see a purple light. So maybe it is a, a sort of telescope. But it depends which side... Which side we're looking in. If we looked at it from the other angle, we saw different things. See nothing here. And there's that odd thing again. Is that the bone structure that's standing behind us? That looks like a building of some kind. Let's return it to its original position. We found out that nature causes balance. And we found that... Um, Equilibrium causes uh, dynamic, like including dynamic stuff, causes equilibrium. Is that right? And then if we include all three forces uh, static, energy, and dynamic then we will cause civilization. Huh. Interesting. So yeah, it, it looks like each of these is a reflector that's pointing in a different direction. So this side will look over there. One of the sides looks over here towards this bone sculpture. And I guess one of the sides is zooming in on this rock that's standing right behind us. Okay. That's interesting. Not sure what to make of that yet. Now let's go ahead and continue back where that guy was running away. Hmm. It looks like two directions could go up or to the left. Let's maybe start by going up. Try to get a sense of where we are. Is that the purple, uh, purple tower? Purple looking glass? I'm not sure.
sometimes it is helpful just to kind of take a look around. Sometimes there might be a ladder or a button that's not readily available as you're walking over. It seems like we're in kind of a big circle. Let's go inside. Let's not go inside. It's apparently locked. Okay. Well, nowhere to go but down then. Take another view down here. Something red. Some kelp, maybe, under the water? Not sure. Seems like there's a ladder downward. Okay. Let's skip across some stones. Protagonist, of course, is um, generally afraid to get wet. All right, looks like we found the purple telescope. Let's learn more about how these telescopes work. It's black, so I assume that means that side is pointing backwards towards me. I can see the yellow one here. And I can see nothing. It should be over there. Alright, let's turn it twice. Because I like seeing the yellow one. I think that sounds good. And then let's stand here. Because the feeling I'm getting is that can now look into that side and see the yellow one. So if I stand over here, I can see the red one. Is that right? Perfect. Somehow this seems like something I should do, because maybe I'm going to shoot a laser beam or a light through these, and maybe lining them up. It's going to help me somehow. Take a look. That's a rock face. That's reflecting back. Now I can see the red one. What? Really? Maybe that's a different red one. Because that, I think, is this one way the heck over there. Not the one that's there. Just trying to confirm here. Yep, see purple. 
looks good. Okay. Can we maybe climb down? Maybe not. Well, so far so good. Those weren't kelp. Maybe they're clams or something. Huh. I'm behind this. Why? What? Why? What is... What am I doing? I'm maneuvering this plant. But why? detector so maneuvering it to that position made it suddenly start making sound huh I'm going to call that puzzle solved, maybe? Hmm, stained glass could be important. I could flip that switch, but maybe I'll glance around for a second. Alright, let's flip it. Okay. glowing bug. Huh. It's an interesting way to open a door. It's two. These two people are balanced against this one person. Well, I guess the fulcrum is kind of 
there. Interesting. It's a little creepy. It sort of gives us the sense of uh, what is that for? Who built that and why? There's a book here. Books are good. Let's read this book. It's got a leaf on the cover. I have done it. I have used his swirling, linking book to follow him. I touched my palm to its glowing panel, and I felt the tingling begin. There was a sudden sickening lurch in my stomach. Then I fell into the page. This has happened before, I know it. It happened the first time I came to this place, when I followed his murdering sons from Naranyan. Nar Narayan? It happened when I used his hidden books, and it happened when I finally opened the machine, right before the fog first ate my mind. The fog didn't find me this time. When I opened my eyes, I was alone in a room. I was standing in the home of my betrayers. I couldn't move. I was afraid. I thought they'd known that I'd come and would be waiting for me, just like they had waited inside this very tusk. I was afraid they would tie me up again, that the poison snakes would strike. But the silence was unbroken. The whole house was still, and without really knowing what I did, I started to search every room, every floor, every cabinet. I found his journals. Atris never-ending journals. I found the book that brought me back to this world, the lesson world that he calls Jnainin. Oh, Tamra, my love, how long have I been trapped here? How much of my life has been eaten by the fog? The face I see in the lagoon isn't one I ever remember wearing. It's so much older, so much more savage, but it is me. It is Gavedro, and I remember what they did how they let my people to death. I have returned several times now to Tamank, Tam Tamana. I am searching for some sign of his sons. I was certain they would run back to their father, but so much time has passed, so many years in which to forget about my people. Is that what happened, Atris? Safe in your beautiful new home, enjoying life with your dear wife and family? Did you become so busy envisioning new worlds that you forgot the ones you already created? I must be very careful. I must not let them know that I am free. I will read what journals I can find to figure out where his two sons are hiding. And when I've found the sons again, when I've got the whole family together, I will bring them down. Atris and his family will suffer the way I have suffered for years. Cirrus and Akinar are not in Tamanra. Every day I become more and more convinced. Atris's sons are not there. What happened, Atris? Did you grow tired of them the way you tired of Narayan? Did you abandon them the way you abandoned my people, behind your shield? It does not matter. I can still take revenge against the father. Now that I am no longer stuck on Jananin, I can avenge all the dead in my world. I have reopened all the other books. I have begun making changes in those worlds, using his own lessons against him. There is still much work to be done, but eventually, I will lure him to this tusk. I will find some way to make him follow me here from Tamarana. Because we have a picture of a circle, a stick with a C, and some, I don't know, crystals or something? For now, I will concentrate on the Orbiter. It is not a natural part of this world. The material that creates it is nothing like I've seen. It reminds me just a little of the shield. And it is the same material, it can't be damaged. But perhaps I can damage the other devices. Um, okay, so we have some kind of gear picture. No, it cannot be true. Surely his journals deceive me. He says he's brought them back. He says he's given the Dni brethren new life. But how? How can one man have so much power? How can one man's writings reawaken a dead world? I don't know what this means. By all that is sacred, Tamra, 
what does it mean? It doesn't change a thing. I can still continue as I planned. I can still seek revenge for my people. I will make my enemies suffer. By the weaving, Tamra, this changes everything. So one thing I noticed um, before we keep going in this book is that there are chapter numbers here. And the chapter numbers seem to be written in in, in a magical language. So let's maybe just flip back here. So if we have one letter Y, that's maybe the number one. One letter Y and a half is, I guess, the number two. And we have two Ys. They've got some flourishes, but I'm not sure if the flourishes matter. Um, so I guess this would be four. Something with a, I guess, like a closed Y and a normal Y. And we have a closed Y and a... Um, Maybe I should write this down. And like a, I don't know, a thing? I found a way to reprogram his scanning device. It requires scavenging parts from another. Okay. Some kind of gears and stuff. Another mechanism in the tusk, but I think the gears I leave behind can still be operated by hand. So one thing I'm noticing is there's a lot of things that deal with threes or Ys. Maybe that's just because this is the third game that went with something, uh, you know, some theme of number three. It is finished. All is ready for Atrus's arrival. Tonight I will sleep among the ghosts. Then tomorrow I will link back, uh, link to Tamana. When I link out, I'll be carrying his book. May the spirits of my people serve to guide me in this. Whole bunch of blank pages. We've obtained that book, so we'll be able to reference it later. Okay, and I think we're coming up on uh, maybe a good place to stop. So let's go ahead and stop here and rejoin next time. We'll continue exploring the room inside of this tusk. See what else we can find. I'll see you then.